top of the time. This is tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is tea time, and we are here with a rescheduled tea time from January. That's right. This morning, I have Sabrina Osa in the studio with me, and we are going to be talking about Osa Safe. So this morning's tea time is a trigger warning for anyone out there. You will see the trigger warning going up and down on the screen from time to time in the show, but you will see also a bunch of links where you can reach Sabrina. So before we get started, we're going to get right into the disclaimer, and then we're going to do a little bio intro, and then I'm going to get Sabrina to jump in, and we're going to serve a good, strong cup of tea on safety this morning. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogue and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are, to, are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participation are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward for, may include discussion for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutic advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect that wish and will see you at a later show at a later time. So we got the disclaimer out. Let's get a little bio into the incredible guests that I have waiting in the back room here. And then we're going to get into serving a good strong cup of tea. Again, today's tea time is trigger warning. So if you are tuning in and you feel triggered, please, I will not be offended if you feel that you have to tune out. Um, so a little bit on Sabrina. Sabrina Osa is the founder and CEO of Osa Safe. Feel safe where you live, work and play. She is a TEDx speaker, author, and real estate agent on promoting safety and preventing violence in the workplace, schools, and in places of residence. Sabrina's personal and professional experience with the subject allowed her to bring a unique and holistic approach as a solution. By combining education and technology, we can save lives and bottom, li and bottom line. She is also a professional dancer teacher who uses her performance abilities to educate on the subject. As a real estate agent, Sabrina is bridging the real estate industry with OSA Save. So let me get Sabrina in here and let me grab a sip of tea. My mouth, I'm starting to get a little dry here. So welcome Sabrina and good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, Miss Liz, for having us. It is an honor to have you. So Sabrina, if you'd like to share a little bit with the audience, a little bit on what OSA Safe is this morning. Yes, uh, we are OSA Safe, as you mentioned in the bio, feel safe where you live, learn, work and play. 
Uh, I am a speaker and consultant, a real estate agent, and recently a children's book author on promoting safety and preventing violence in the workplace schools, but in particular in your place of residence. Uh, it is, we are working very hard to make safety a required standard condition of residency. Uh, and we'll explain what that is in the interview, but just to keep it short and sweet, uh, that's basically what, what we're doing. <laughs> so in, in your bio, it says here that, uh, you're a real estate agent. So how do you go about bringing this uh, OSA safe into the, that, that form? Yes. Uh, well, as a real estate agent, we come across landlords, tenants, property owners, property managers, uh, superintendents, or, or super, I should say, uh, those who supervise the multifamily dwellings, uh, homeowners uh, of, of their own property. And uh, this is very, it's a good way to promote our services, to let people know of our services, because everything happens in a residence. Any violence, abuse, chaos, dysfunction, if you think about it, the root of it is in some type of residence, whether you live in a townhouse, a co-op, a condo, a single family home, a multifamily dwelling, a two family home, a villa, a mansion, a mobile home. It could be even in a dorm. It could be in a senior community. Um, the behind closed doors, you can't be two ways, like in public one way and then behind closed doors another way. You need to be the same. And that same should be nonviolent, non abusive, respectful. Uh, so, this is what we are, we are saying to, uh, like in, at my brokerage firm, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, uh, this is what we are introducing into the real estate industry. Um, so, that way, it's a paid service. You know, a lot of nonprofits, we respect the nonprofits out there that deal with domestic violence. We even don't even like to say domestic violence. We, we prefer to say home violence because it's more inclusive. People can identify more with home violence because it's kind of like an oxymoron. Wait a minute, Sabrina, your home should be safe. There shouldn't be violence. Exactly. Yeah. So we prefer to say home violence. And we're saying to the real estate industry, have our, our services in homes, in any type of residence to make homes safe beyond heat, hot water, electricity, central air. That's great that you have that. But if you don't have safety, it doesn't matter. It, like I say it in my TEDx talk, it doesn't matter if you have yeah, great. You have heat, hot water, the, everything is up to code, the windows, so on and so forth. But if you have somebody beating the crap out of you or you're beating the crap out of your children, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, so this is where the real estate industry, our focus is in the real estate, real estate industry. Um, I hope I answered the question. Well, I, and, and I'm glad that you brought that up because I did check out your TED talk and you had said that you prefer to say home violence instead of domestic violence. And I'm glad that you say home violence because we don't speak enough about what happens in the home. You know, um, being a survivor of domestic violence, what happened behind closed doors stayed behind closed doors for many, many years. So I'm glad that you bring that and you change that as well, because it also brings it more of an opening feel where you can speak about it. Where if you hear the word domestic, you're like, oh, my goodness. Like, And there's so many different forms of domestic abuse that people don't realize. Like, it's not only the physical. There's the financial. There's, you know, there's the emotional. There's a lot of things that go with domestic violence. So I'm really glad that you brought that up, Sabrina. Um, Thank you. In your, TED, in your TED Talk, you say, don't leave. And when I heard that in your TED Talk, uh, I was just like, oh, that is an important factor i think that a lot of people need to hear especially as survivors of abuse we why do we always leave why should it be us that leaves when we're not the one doing it right, right? exactly yes the title of the talk of the tedx talk is and i did that intentionally obviously to create 
to get people to think differently about the whole situation. If you're a victim of home violence, don't leave, stay. And our whole premise at Oso oh Safe is we are looking to flip the script, if you will. For example, if you're a, uh, a homeowner in any capacity, usually if you have multiple units, uh, you're stuck with the abusive family or the abuser, and then all of your well-behaved, safe practicing tenants leave because they hear screaming, yelling, police coming to the residence. You're scared, like, oh, did you hear what happened in, in uh, Unit 22? And you're in the elevator with the abuser, and it just makes it very awkward, very uncomfortable, and and then you leave right like your your well-behaved safe practicing tenants leave no we're saying you stay right where you are if you're living with an abuser your partner or your kids your partner's abusing your kids well why should you run with your kids like a refugee going from one residence to the next going to a shelter uh, moving, uprooting the kids to different schools. No, the abuser needs to go. Not, and I say this throughout the TEDx talk. It's the abuser that has to leave. The abuser is the one that has to has to pay the consequences. And this is the whole premise about oh so safe certified properties. We are implementing and executing and introducing oh so safe certifications for properties where. You sign the policy, you are educated, you go through the seminar. There's other components and we could go through them later on in the interview, but the abuser is the one that's got to go, not you, the victim. You stay right where you are with the children. Now, mind you, the abuser can be male or female. So we're very, you know, it, it, it's both ways, whoever the abuser is. That's who needs to go. So, and I, and the TEDx talk is, is it, it was done on purpose. So that way people think differently about home violence, about safety in general, um, flipping the script, if you will. So, uh, yeah, so it, it was done on purpose and it, it's changing the face of residency really, because why why should you leave you're the one yeah. that's in turmoil you're the one that's getting beat up whether it be verbal physical sexual abuse and in that is like you mentioned uh miss liz like financial abuse mental abuse emotional um it's all enveloped in there but we like to categorize it in three buckets if you will verbal physical sexual abuse um so, yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up. Well, I, and I like that you're flipping the script because so so many times we follow what society always tells us, right? You're the, you're the one being abused, going to a shelter, going to this. So we're all also re-traumatizing our children if we're leaving a domestic violence, right? So when we're in a home violence, and like you said, the neighbors will hear the, the, the calls and that. And sometimes they'll just, they'll whisper about the neighbor, or they'll, they'll talk to the landlord and say, well, look at your neighbor over here in, in number two is fighting all the time. I, I'm going to have to move. And like you said, why should other people have to move because of a situation? You know, let's really get to a different flip the script here. And let's really change the way we think about home violence. You know, I'm going to use home violence more than domestic violence because I feel that this is a topic we're going to be talking about a lot today during our interview is the home. And, you know, and you also have the safety of where you work and where you play. So if you could give a little bit on that as well, Sabrina. Sure. Uh, I wanted to mention, we respect all of the nonprofits uh, that deal with domestic violence, but we feel that this needs to be a paid service, especially in homes, in places of residence. So we're offering the Oso Safe certification for property owners, property managers, and and th we want this to propagate over all residency, whether you rent, whether you own, whether you have a mortgage or not, because that way, Miss Liz, it gets resolved yep. versus a back burner issue. Oh, you know, I'll give money to this charity that deals with domestic violence later. Um, 
uh, it's like it, it falls by the wayside. No, we're saying let's make this, let's make safety a required standard condition of residency. Let's put our money worth where our mouth is. Let's get this into residency where it's a paid service. So that way it gets resolved. Yep. So that way it's not like a, um, a back burner issue because quite frankly, violence in the home, there's no excuse for it. None as far as we're concerned. And to tie it in with what you just said, we say at Oso Safe, if we make home safe, Everything else will be safe. Workplaces, schools, universities, um, public places, our movie theaters, our malls, our concerts, everything starts in the home. Because if you think about it, if you trace back, um, if not all, almost all, every school shooter, yep. every university shooter, every 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 um, workplace violent incident uh in at the mall uh movie theaters the perpetrator was violent at home yep. first so if you did not nip it in the bud at home by the time they reach 18 19 20 21 22 years old and they have a gun and they have a weapon it's too late it's too late then you have students murdered staff murdered uh um your your teachers um professors uh it, it's too late to do something in the workplace there's um you know and, and it's kept hush hush right like because companies don't want this going out they yeah. don't want um uh, bad press with their workplaces but it's a fact uh, there are 2 million incidents of workplace violence that occurs in the U.S. alone. That comes out to out to be about 33,000 per week. And of those, 17 result in a murder. Wow. So no one wants to get this out. No one wants to talk about it. But we have to talk about it because then you have a murdered employee and you you as a as a as a uh, an employer, you didn't do enough to protect your employees. And well, they always put it on the blame on someone else, right? Like, right. oh, I did. I wasn't aware of that. It had to come from home. And I'm glad that you bring it back at all, always back to the home, because it is true. There, there are so many flags that are hidden behind a closed door in a home that when they go into the workplace, when they go into the schools, when they go into the playgrounds, you know, that it is hidden. There are so many things that are hidden behind that closed door at home. And we really, really need to bring that awareness. And I'm glad, Sabrina, that you mentioned that it is a paid service. Also, safe is a paid service, and you're finding a solution because as I'm, I'm, I work with many of the services and all of that out there. And I want the services to know that I value your services. But let's start finding solutions so that we don't have to keep creating these services up after. Let's get the prevention out there. Let's get it before it comes right? right exactly and that's what we focus on prevention and look we're not saying you're never going to fight or argue with your spouse your significant other your partner your, that you're never going to have an argument with your children of course you are that's reality but there's a way to fight there's a way to be in disagreement and that way is a, a board, a line that you never cross. It never crosses the line of abuse, not verbal, physical, or sexual abuse ever. Uh, there's always respect, even when you disagree, even when you, if, if you know you're going to have a heated argument with your partner, let's say, you know, you're, you're red and he or she is blue, but you need to come to some sort of middle ground, well, get the kids to be watched by um, a family member, by a trusted friend, a trusted neighbor, and say, look, we don't want the kids to watch this, but again, it'll never cross the line of abuse. We're going to respect each other, whether kids are present or not. Respect has to be there. But we need to, if we have to take out a flipboard, write things down, say, look, these are my reasons why I'm red 
and these are the reasons why you're blue. Let's come to some middle ground, some sort of um, compromise um, where we where we, we respect each other's wishes because I could say I like like you, Miss Liz, I'm also a survivor of violence. My father beat my mother on a regular basis. My mother would beat me. It's very traumatizing to a child to see their parents fighting and vi violent, abusive, chaotic, dysfunctional, very traumatizing. I can't tell you how many times uh, and actually calling the police at that time was even worse. I, I could remember yeah. one episode, the police, when I thought I was safe, the police came and the and I yelled at my father. I don't remember what I said, but I felt safe to defend myself and my mother. The cop ye turned around and yelled at me. I, I can remember his face right here and saying, don't you dare uh, uh, yell at your father. And it just was so like there's no protection no. like there's no protection and i have to say the laws and i'm sure you'll agree with me even though we just met the laws the courts the judges the so-called child protective service agencies they make matters worse they make horrible matters worse and with also safe certifications you won't need any of that it gets resolved right in residency especially for children because children will have a say on who they want to live with yeah. if they're under 18 years of age because you know the laws especially in this country the united states we wait until they're 18 to have a say in their life, it's too late. It's too yeah. late. By 18, you have seen so much horror, so much trauma. You're either going to repeat the same mistakes. You're going to do drugs, get involved with the wrong people. You're going to start cutting yourself or, and, or you're going to kill yourself. Yep. You'll, you'll commit suicide if you even make it to 18 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Because of all of those things that I just mentioned. No, in also safe certified properties, we have a policy. This is before you enter the residence. And even if you are in the residence, we say, look, you need to become also safe certified when your lease renews, you're going to sign the policy. You're going to go through education. It's called the also safe home sweet home seminar. You're going, we're going to have technology installed where it will detect violence. So that way it eliminates the he said, she said factor. And then the fourth component of the certification is that there are therapists assigned to the property. So it's like a one month, once a month check-in. Is everything okay? Do you feel like any problems are looming? This is all preventative versus waiting for an episode of violence to occur. Then police come, you're in the middle of a court battle it's horrendous out there yeah. especially i have to say so-called child protective service agency and i'm speaking from personal and pro and, and professional experience yeah. they need to rename themselves apa the abusive parent protection agency because that's who they protect they do not protect the child um and we're looking to flip all of this with our i services. think i think flipping the script on a lot of things and i'm i'm so glad to have you here this morning sabrina because we're talking about home safety and you know I, again i i'm we're we're not here to bash any of the services but there are things that are broken in the systems that need to be fixed and I think that the only way that the, the systems are going to be fixed is by hearing survivors. But let's stop getting survivors. Let's get some prevention out there before it starts. And I, and I really appreciate what you're doing, Sabrina, because we need services like yours out there for prevention before the, the attack comes, before the services get involved. You know, let's, let's lower the numbers instead of rising the numbers. You know, uh, so I really appreciate you flipping the script. And I, I myself have done, gone through re-victimizing by the court systems, by the children's aid services, by a lot of things that need to be fixed. These systems need to be fixed. They are broken. We're not bashing any services. We're saying that the systems need to be fixed. We, and we 
we need to fix them by people who have lived and experienced it, like myself and Sabrina here. Because without somebody who lives through something, how can you fix it? How can you understand the situation when you haven't lived it? Uh, we do have a comment here that I want to put up. I think it's very important to bring it up because I am here for men and women. We're not here just for women. So I want to bring that comment up. And the systems for the males, it, you know, males are getting abused as well. We have to stop and we got to flip that script too. It's not only women that are being abused, um, you know. And again, Sabrina, I want to thank you for doing what you're doing and bringing OSA Safe to. And I, I like the platform. You know, we need the education. We need home safety first because that's where it all begins and ends, right? Is in the home. Right, right. Thank you so much. Thank you for um, giving us positive feedback on what we're doing. And uh, yes, it, change has to happen. We can't go on anymore the way we have been. It's been broken for a long time. And as I say in my TEDx talk, I'm not. we're not trying to bash any organizations. They work hard. They have a lot on their plate. I get it. These child protective service agencies are inundated. Their representatives are inundated with cases. But... Yeah but the writing is on the wall like the evidence is right in front of you connect the dots yep. uh, especially when you have um uh there's violence there's medical records there's pornography going on it, it's right there connect the dots it, it's not that difficult to say wow this child is abused wow th this this woman is being abused or this man is being abused and yes i i want to speak to that comment Absolutely. That's why I built Oh So Safe the way I did. Um, and I did that on purpose. It's horrible either way, whether the victim is female or male. It's horrible either way. And there are abusive women out there. Yeah. Absolutely. And the children are the ones that suffer the most. And they are the ones that are the least protected, I have to say. So, yeah. um, so yes, we, we honor men's pain that they're being abused. You know, it's, it's whoever it is. And in residency, mm -hmm. it could go either way. A lot of the time, uh, it could be that the person is both a victim and an abuser, you know, like my mother, really, my mother's yeah. a perfect example of that. So, so we get it. So this is why I designed the also oh safe certifications for properties in the way that I did, because it kind of, it gets to the meat, it gets to the meat and potatoes of the problem. And it's more preventative work versus, oh, cleaning up such a mess. Yeah. And, and it's, it, and it's almost, you, you can't even clean it up at that point, you know? So um, it's combining education and technology and so that way we make safety a required standard condition of residency and it, it it where and i've said this on multiple occasions because uh, i i i'm a member of several organizations like um uh like uh, the national association of realtors the new jersey association of realtors you can't do you can't do the same thing and expect different results. You have to change it and yep. really gut it, like really from the roots. And I feel like that's what we're doing at Oh So Safe. Um, and it makes people think differently about safety. You know, it should be basic, Miss Miss Liz. It should be basic. No one can live with violence, abuse, chaos, dysfunction, especially children. And you know, yep. and you know what? You're not supposed to. You're not yep. supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Sabrina, I want to get into, I, I, I on, on your website, you, you talk about the also save kids. And you also mention discipline and abuse. Because a lot of people will say, well, that's my child. I can discipline my child. Your child is not given to you as a property that you can beat on and you can name call and all of that. Uh, as a survivor of uh, parent abuse as well, um, my, my parents were very abusive and that. Uh, it doesn't give you the right to abuse your child. Let's let's talk about the difference between discipline and abuse. Yes. 
Thank you for bringing that up because this is really important. And we go in at length in our seminars to make the distinction because obviously you, you live somewhere. There's so many parents out there at the hospital. You, you're both the mother and the father. You're given the, the child. Okay. Go home. Right. Yeah. But what kind of a home is that going to be? Discipline, the difference, the main difference between discipline and abuse. Discipline instills education and abuse instills fear. So, and abusers will say, no, I'm disciplining my child. What are you talking about? I, uh, this is my kid. As you said, Miss Liz, and, and we want to even say it a different way. Just because you are a parent, it doesn't give you the right to abuse your child. And abusers will say, no, I'm disciplining my child. No, your child is scared to death of you. Your child may say out there in public, no, I love mommy and daddy. Mommy and daddy are great. Or stepmom, stepdad, whatever the case may be. But behind closed doors, they're scared to death. Yeah. They're spied on. They're verbally, physically, sexually abused or a combination of all three. They are told that they're a brat, a monster, a prissy little bitch, you're ungrateful, you're a baby, you're a drama queen, you're yelling and screaming, you're in and out of courts as a child, you're, this is not normal. In yeah. also safe certified properties, this does not happen. So discipline, for example, let's say your child throws things or slams the door or, and granted, they'll have temper tantrums, right? You don't beat the crap out of the kid. You first, you, you, as a, as a tactic, you, you let them, let them blow off the steam and talk to them afterwards and say, little Timmy, little Sally, what is happening? Talk to me. Uh, what is going on? Is, is it something at school? Is it that you, you, um, that you feel that you're not heard? Uh, is it something that happened that you saw something on TV and it bothered you? Just throw different things out there and see what they respond to. A child knows who makes them feel safe. From teeny tiny, they know who makes them feel safe. So, and this is what we say at Oh So Safe, we give the power or the voice to these children and say, who makes you feel safe? We're promoting something oh so safe kids, as you mentioned on YouTube and TikTok. And it's a safe space for these kids to be heard. And to we talk about abuse, we talk about safety, and we address all children, oh so safe kids, the ones that are safe at home and the ones that are not safe at home. We don't say, oh, you're an oh so safe kid only if you're not safe at home. No. All kids are also safe kids. So that way it's inclusive and the ones that are safe at home can help the ones that are not safe at home. And they are instrumental, Miss Liz, the ones that are safe at home because they are proof. They are proof that it can happen. They practice safety. They could say, wow, wait a minute, little Sally, little Timmy. That's what goes on in your house that you get beaten, that you get locked in your room. That doesn't happen in my house. When, when I do something, I know that I'm loved. I'm not scared in my house. My parents discipline me. I'm learning that throwing something or hitting somebody is, is not right. It's not being respectful. So that's the main um, difference. With discipline, it instills education, respect, and abuse instills fear, disrespect. I hope I answered the question. No, you didn't. And thank you again, Sabrina, for what you're doing. Uh, and again, we're going back to the home violence because, like you said, a kid might go to school and they'll say, oh, that doesn't happen at home. But let's talk about the teachers. Let's talk about the educators. They also might be going through something and bringing it to the school. So they might be lashing out with their students and that as well. Uh, but again, it's right back to the home. Right. What is happening in that teacher's home, that educator's home, that service provider's home? You know, a lot of people that are in the services are going through abuse and 
helping abusers. <laughs> they, we really have to find some prevention here. We really have to start looking at prevention services and, and stop creating more services that are just long lines of waiting lists and waiting lists where the abusers just get more time to beat and take this person down. So by having prevention services, we're actually making a difference. We're really flipping that script. And I think we really need to start flipping the scripts on a lot of things and a lot of education that is being taught out there. Like, why do we have to have these uh, seminars where we have to say, well, if you're being abused, come to me. Let's have these seminars where we're saying, let's prevent the abuse so you don't have to come to me. Right, right. We, we couldn't agree more. And that's how Oh So Safe is designed. That's the model. That's the template, if you will, of Oh So Safe. It has to be resolved in residency because that's where it starts. That's where it ex escalates. That's where you're, when you're home, that's your home your home base is is yeah. being in your home whatever that type of residence is that's where you learn bad good ugly indifferent everything the foundation is always in the home so that's why our focus is to make home safe by combining education and technology and yes it, it works the same whether you're a teacher being abused at home and then you go to school and you're teaching your students and if you lash out well again let's resolve it in residency yep. teachers make mistakes i get it we get it they make mistakes superintendents professors they make mistakes but if you're you're being you're a role model period over and out you're a role model so you need to be there for your students and you're not helping your students if you're catering to the abusive parents the abusive step parents of your students you need to listen to your students and and you're there with the student all day long every day so you know your students better than a lot of people sometimes even better than the parents because the parents go to work they see them at the end of the day or in the morning, but then during that nine, you know, eight to three, eight to four time, a lot's happening with your students. So, so you need to be in, in, in your best shape and we get it. There's off days, you have your moments, but if you're being abused at home, well, hire us, get us in there, get us into the residence um this has to be a standard and this is why the certifications are a standard safety becomes a required standard condition of residency it it will solve a lot of problems it will solve a lot of problems in residency what are the warning signs do you even realize that you're being abused what constitutes a good relationship everybody says communicate 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 well, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? So if something bothers me about my partner, then I have to communicate. A lot of people don't even know how to do that. Like, what does that mean? Well, first off, no matter what the subject matter, you don't have to yell. You don't have to scream. You could pretty much say anything. Well, almost anything, as long as it's respectful in a low voice, in a me, in a, your, your, your normal voice, you could say anything. And even if it's embarrassing, even if it's, wow, this is hard to talk about with my partner, and, but you could open with that and say, look, it's hard for me to talk about this. So please bear with me, be patient, open with that. That will kind of break the ice a little bit. And that way you could have water next to you. What it's take a break a little bit. If it's, if it's a difficult subject for you, maybe you're calling a bad memory. Maybe you were sexually abused and, and you're with your partner and something was a trigger and your partner doesn't even know that that was, that that happened. So all of these dynamics, teachers, superintendents, professors, we're all human. But abuse, there's no excuse. There's no excuse for abuse. Um, 
and I hope I answered the question. Sometimes I go off on a tangent. No, no, no. You're doing okay. amazing, Sabrina. Oh, and thank it, you. It's a, it's a hard subject to talk about is abuse, especially yeah. being a survivor of abuse. Uh, it is hard sometimes for us to get our words together and gather, you know, and, and we're always like, you know, did we do good? Did we do good? Yeah, we, we did good. We're here today for a reason. The two of us, we're both survivors and we're both bringing awareness and prevention through this tea time. So anybody would like to know more about OSA Safe and that, please check out her website. It is on, on the screen here on the video, on the audio, it will be in the description. I really strongly want to thank you again, Sabrina, for what you're doing, because I love prevention programs. I love before it happens. Let's get to the problem before it happens so we don't have to deal with it after it happens. Like you said, school shootings and, you know, that murders and stuff. Let's prevent that. Let's stop adding the numbers and start decreasing the numbers by getting prevention services out there like this one. So I do want to get into your tea before we we're getting close to the hour. And I want to know what Sabrina's tea is today that you're serving. Yes. Uh, time, education, action. So, and when I say time, uh, tea, time, we need to do this now because there's no more time to waste so many children, and I was one of them, are suffering tremendously. They go home to hell. So we need to take, we need to do this now. There's no more time to waste. Education, E for education. A lot of this is education, and embedded in that is a practice. We have to practice all of this education. It's not just one and done, which is what we do at Oso Safe. So it's education, practicing it, doing it over and over again until it becomes second nature, yeah. practicing safety, education. And then A, action, taking action. Nothing's going to happen if we're silent, if we look the other way, if we ignore it. Uh, our children are counting on us. So taking action and speaking out um, and, and action, obviously doing, speaking out, being there for our kids, our students. So that would be the three time education and action. Well, thank you. And that's a strong T and it's really education that we're serving this morning. You know, get educated, flip the scripts, you know, let's really change the way that we look at things. Let's start looking at prevention programs like OSA Safe instead of services that are after programs. Let's start decreasing numbers instead of adding numbers. Uh, again, to the services, I really hope that you're listening. You have two survivors here that are working on prevention, bringing awareness, bringing education. So I want you to listen to this tea time and share it with different organizations and that and say, look it, we're broken. Let's fix these broken pieces by flipping the script, you know? Let's stop doing seminars on what would happen if you got abused. Let's not get abused. Let's stop the abuse. Let's get some prevention out there. So again, Sabrina, we need more programs like yours. So if anybody would like to reach you or know more about the services or what programs and workshops you have, could you share a little bit on that? Sure. Uh, our website, as you mentioned, is ososafe.com. That's O-S-S-O-S-A-F-E.com. We are on all the major social media platforms, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we started a, I think it's been a year now though, Oso Safe Kids. It's on YouTube and TikTok um, that we are speaking to children, kids of all ages from pre-K all the way up to high school. It's a safe space for us to talk about abuse, safety, practicing safety. We speak about it openly. Um, I have my YouTube channel, Oso oh Safe Kids, and on Amazon, we have uh, our book, our first book, our only book, Home Safe Home for You and Me. And um, we've been getting a lot of good, positive feedback on the book. It's sold on Amazon. And uh, yeah, that would be the best way. <laughs> you mentioned something, TikTok, YouTube, uh, social media, again, home. You know, there's a lot of abuse that's happening on social media, but it's coming from the home. Again, the education needs to be coming into the homes on how to prevent that. So 
being on social media and bringing this awareness and prevention to uh, different homes, Sabrina, what do you feel needs the most impact right now on social media for home safety? Tying it into the home. You know, all of these kids that are demonstrating violence, like they're kidding around, like whether it be uh, boys and girls or girls with boys or uh, just among each other, like a group of boys, a group of girls, it all starts in the home. Again, it, it just all starts in the home. And I would say if they're doing that, doing that on social media, they're definitely doing that in the home. If they're punching each other, if they're knocking each other out, if they're uh, like I see boys pushing girls, that is not good dating practice. It is not it's the opposite of oh so safe. They're being not safe. They're being un oh so safe. And you don't want that. You don't want to repeat the cycle of your abusive parents. You need to be better than that, kids. Oh so safe kids. The ones that are safe at home and the ones that are not safe at home. So it's a matter of connecting the dots, connect making the link, you know. So if they're doing that on screen and social media, they're definitely doing that behind closed doors. And that's what we need to change. That's what we need to call out, if you will. Um, it, it's, it's inexcusable, unacceptable, and it doesn't make you cool at all. So we have a question here for you, Sabrina. How are the services that are dealing with the after effects, the abuse, how are they towards OSA Safe? Are they open to having you come in and speak for seven hours or uh, the way that I'm understanding this question is they want to know if you're, I guess, accepted in the the after prevention programs. Well, it's not about uh, getting accepted. We're just a different model, a different template. So uh, so they, like I said, we, we, we respect all of the nonprofits that are doing, that are doing the after, like come to us when, when he or she beats you up, come to us. But, um, we're a different on a different platform completely. Yeah. And, and I'm glad because we want to do different. We want to be, the focus needs to be in real estate. And as a real estate agent, I have access to all of the tools and resources to make this happen, if you will. That's why in my bio, I say we're bridging it. Oh, so safe and the real estate industry. That's the key. So, um, yeah, it, it's just, we're just different. And, and we like that we're different because that way it gets resolved, especially for children. Uh, and, and the person that's asking the question is getting a little bit more in detail here. They want to know if you've been like accepted to speak in like the children's services or, or the courthouses or stuff like that to like when there's a court case that you could prevent the abuse uh, or situation or something like that. Have you ever been asked to be in any of that stuff? No, not per se. I've done library. Uh, I know the police at certain towns, the police and the domestic violence unit, if you will, would okay. direct the anyone involved whether it be victim or abuser to my to my program but this was years ago at the library and they used the program as a way of saying okay you completed the program but um i have to say in the courts it's like too late yep. once you're in that it's too late and like i said the courts make it worse the laws, the courts, the judges, I mean, and I'm speaking from personal experience. It, it's just, they are misinformed. They are, I, I hate to say it, unqualified to a certain degree. You would think that they would know certain things, judges and, and putting it together. Uh, you know, it's obvious that this person does BDSM pornography. Well, they're an abuser, they're a sex abuser, but because they're a parent or a step parent, nope, and it's legal, well, 
where do you think child sex trafficking comes in and child rape and child pornography connect the dots? Judges are oblivious to this. So, so I want to say we're, we're a different, we have a different approach and we believe it's the correct approach. It's a much better approach and it'll get resolved. Um, we'll see to that, especially for children, because children do not have a voice in the laws, the laws, the courts, the judges, whereas in also safe certified properties, they do. Yeah. And we see the response on YouTube, more on TikTok, the positive response that we get on TikTok, like, wow, and we're new to TikTok, actually. But so I'm glad that we decided to go on TikTok because a lot of the people are children of yeah. all ages, you know, pre-K to high school, which is good for us. And it's global. It, you're not just hitting the United States, right? You're hitting Canada. You're hitting all the other countries, right. you know, like this morning, I'm in Canada, you're in the United States. And again, we are saying that prevention programs need to be heard. You know, we need to start listening to the prevention, not the after services. I do respect the after services, but let's stop adding numbers. Let's decrease numbers. Again, if anybody would like to know anything about OSA Safe, please check out the website at osasafe.com. And again, Sabrina, I really want to thank you for what you're doing. I want uh, I want to talk before we wrap up. I want to get into a little bit of that book that you showed up a little bit. So, sure. sure. Uh, you wrote this book, and what uh, what is the book about? Yes, uh, the title of it is Home Safe Home for You and Me, and it is. It talks about respect. It talks about the difference between abuse um, and non-abuse. So respect and disrespect. And for example, one, uh, let's see, one page of it is, know that for the moment, which means right now, you are safe. And my niece loves that uh, page. Um, and it's just to get children to see to, to stay in the moment and not think so much. I, I know as a kid, I you feel the weight of the world on you whenever you're in an abusive environment. You live like this day to day. It's no way to live. But just to even have it introduced into your consciousness that right now for the moment, right now you're safe. It brings some sort of relief to the child reading this. You know, so um, and I I designed the book to be very inclusive, like I'm showing uh, African family, Asian family, Arabic, uh, a white family. So it's very inclusive. So that way and different in different residences. So it brings that concept of oh, so safe certified properties. Um, and also it's it's involving schools where the school makes the link where school in order for schools to be safe, homes must, must be safe first. So, um, yeah, so it, it's sold on Amazon and, uh, and the illustrator actually is in Pakistan. My publisher, uh, f finds like illustrators that fit your needs and the illustrator, he did such a great job. Awaz Jalani all the way from Pakistan. And um, it's a very positive book and it's actually, uh, I just got it into Holland, Holland Shores oh. and also in Jamaica. And it's being adapted in schools uh, um, in the US, I'm being told uh, locally and hopefully it'll be uh, national. You know, that's the intent. Um, I don't think there's a book like this out there really. Um, or it's in that family of safety, kids safety, and and it's giving them a voice, children, to say their cheer. I want to live where I am also safe, and I am also safe with whoever that is, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a close family friend. If mom, dad, stepmom, stepdad are abusive, I want to live where I am also safe, and I am also safe with you fill in the blank, kids. And the book talks about that quite a bit to give them voice um, and and they could they could say, yeah, I'm safe with mom and dad, but but they'll repeat it 
wait a minute, I'm not safe. So it's giving them courage to say, yeah, you know what? I, I'm safe with aunt, with auntie, with uncle, with grandma, grandpa. I want to go there. It's giving them voice. So that's basically the the summation of the book, the messages, if you will, of the book. So one last question before we wrap up your tea time, Sabrina. Sure. Uh, today, being on tea time, what message would you like to give to everyone that is listening and that will watch the replay? I think it can't be said enough. Uh, safety must become a required standard condition of residency. I want to repeat that. I want to repeat also that just because you are a parent, it doesn't give you the right to abuse your child. And to all of the children out there that are listeners, that are parents of children, you have a voice, kids. You have a voice, whether you're safe at home or not safe at home. Your voice is powerful. And we're hoping that this podcast and the book and the videos that we have on TikTok and YouTube that you will disclose, you will say who makes you feel safe because you know, you know who makes you feel safe and it needs to be honored. It needs to be respected and we'll see to it that that happens. Well, again, I want to thank you so much for your program and for reaching out and being on Tea Time. I need more programs like this. I need more prevention out there because this is what Tea Time is all about. It's teaching education awareness. We really need to start looking at prevention programs and that uh I, before we wrap up we have a couple minutes left i just want to get into some of the questions that i ask all my guests so i asked you sabrina what your favorite color was and you said blue why the color blue i've always liked blue uh i like the deep blue or like uh mediterranean i'm italian <laughs> so the mediterranean sea blue um it's very calming and uh and uh, I just, uh, yeah, I've always liked blue I, I, since I was a kid. You know, sometimes as a kid, you change what your favorite color is. I, I've been pretty consistent. So it, to me, it's, it signifies some level of calmness, if you will. And I asked you one word to describe yourself as an individual, and you gave me the word expressive. Why that word? Yeah, I'm a dancer. So, and I couldn't dance when I was younger younger because of my home environment it was hell i couldn't even mention dance so and as a dancer you're expressive <laughs> and uh so and i like the word because it's like a reaching out you know you express you're reaching out you're connecting so um i i picked expressive because it ties in with dance and uh and i am a dancer so uh and it's very freeing you know so if you can express yourself you're free yeah. and it's the opposite of being abused right abusive you're free you're respected you're expressing so yeah i think those were the reasons why i picked that word well being a dancer right you're able to express the freedom of feeling you know safe the flow of the arms, the legs, and that. Right. Uh, so again, I want to encourage services. Please listen to this tea time. Please share it with other services. Let's see if we can get some prevention before we get to the after services. And again, Sabrina, I am like you. The court systems and that are broken. We need to fix them. Unless you guys live it, you don't understand it. So let's get the prevention out there before the aftercare. There shouldn't be any aftercare programs out there. Let's start decreasing those services and let's start increasing prevention services. Um, again, for anybody that would like to check out OSA Safe, please check out their website and reach out to Sabrina. If you or your, your home or your school or your services would like to have uh, Sabrina speak with them, uh, check out her website because I really believe that we really need to start making this impact by flipping the script. And I love that flipping the script because we need to flip the script. We've played the other script for far too long, for far too many centuries. Let's change it and let's flip it. So again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank all the supporters of Miss Liz's Tea Time. And I will see everybody this afternoon for a second rescheduled Tea Time from January 
with Gloria Peterson. And we will be talking about journaling, training, and all of that good stuff where you can fight your fears of speaking. So again, today, it's going to be about speaking out, using your voice, and really making an impact. So again, thank you all for tuning in. And I will see you guys this afternoon at 3 p.m. for a second tea time.